Hello everybody. It's a pretty interesting weekend. I have arriving. Uh, you know I've been trying to integrate a whole bunch of other stuff <clears throat> with uh, things uh, like the reminder system. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I, I am in dire need of reminders and like timers so I can keep track of time and just little reminders that persist. So I, I need to get stuff out of my head as quickly as possible. So that's the it's this little reminder tool idea that I've been working on. Something that I would carry around. And then I'm looking at like integrating that into the keyboard as much as possible because I carry a keyboard around. Um, and then, like, how do I update the reminders quickly and easily? <clears throat> so the latest idea has been to build it into the keyboard and build a display into the keyboard. And this is, uh, this is slightly different from the kitchen sink idea because the kitchen sink idea, this actually might be better than the kitchen sink idea, aside from perhaps some USB mass storage, but I might be able to get away with that with a, a USB hub. Um, there is a board maker or a chip maker, I, I don't know what it is, but you know more stuff is getting built into the chip. Uh, so there is a project, uh, I don't even know what they're called at this point, microcontroller, micro, like a teensy main controller unit, MCU, uh, I don't know, whatever. It's a board. It's a breakout board for a chip, and it supports Arduino, it has Wi-Fi on board, it has Bluetooth on board, and it has an OLED built into the chip, it sits on top of the chip. And uh, and the one I got also supports LoRa, because I'm uh, interested in doing like <clears throat> local messaging. As a, as a means of connecting to other people and not using existing infrastructure or not relying on existing infrastructure. It's a double-edged sword anyways, but I guess at this point, even if you broadcast things on an alternative channel and you just blast it out there unencrypted, that's still probably better than, uh, <laughs> than using the internet in any way. Because once the information turns into ones and zeros, like it can be tracked and metadata analyzed and spread out throughout the entire internet and all that craziness. And once it becomes ones and zeros, it's you know, information will be free. Uh, <laughs> hilariously enough, standing on top of your roof and shouting something to everyone that can hear is more secure than tweeting it. <laughs> is more secure than sending it via text message to someone. That's weird. Uh, anyways, so I have this chip, and it, oh, and it has a battery charging circuit built into it—a LiPo charging circuit. Uh, it's called a—it's a high let go ESP thirty-three or thirty-two sixty-six, something like that. It's in that family. But the idea—the the board's a bit bigger. It's kind of like the the Feather, the Arduino Feather, Arduino. Uh, the Adafruit Feather that has all kinds of different modules attached to it. This one just has all the modules. It's very, very, <laughs> very concise, very built in. Uh, they also make similar devices that have OLEDs on them and um, selector buttons. You know, uh, I don't know what you call them. They're kind of like slide buttons. You can slide it down and slide it up, you know, down and release and up and release, or you push it in. And uh, I have one of those that I wanted to use as like a, a button selection or for like a menu selection that would be vi viewed through the OLED and managed through the microcontroller or through the Raspberry Pi. So like originally the idea was to have a Raspberry Pi and then run these peripherals and then just make that do all the things, that, hence the kitchen sink. Uh, but it seems that having a few dedicated tasks that I can build into the keyboard would be even better. Uh, so like my to-do list to have that, uh, to be clear, what I'm talking about here is having the, uh, having that unit 
be the keyboard microcontroller. So it would, it has sufficient inputs for it, at least for 40, no, no, uh, technically for a, I think it goes up to a 60%. It has, it has 23 connections, 23 GPIO. Uh, there's only one PWM, one analog, but I can use that. I'm okay with that. I, I, I want an analog for the buzzer. <laughs> I want to make the little PZO buzzer thing. I like that. Um, so I want to be able to drive one of those. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so it, it would run the keyboard. It would run the keyboard. It would be brains for the keyboard. And then it would have uh, different modes that you would set. So the keyboard itself would be its own computer. It would compute, I guarantee you. <laughs> it just wouldn't be a full computer. It would have a menu system for doing different things, uh, managing your to-do list, uh, setting reminders for things. I'm guessing there would be like a toggle switch or something uh, for controlling where your input goes. But like I always had this input problem for like if I make a little device that's light and easy to carry around that's just a little notifier thing. Uh, by the way, the original, <laughs> the original specifications or the original design idea for this I, this reminder device was called the Annoyotron. Annoyotron. <laughs> so maybe I'll keep that going. I don't know. Um, but the idea is that you would at any point just be able to like, oh, I have an idea. Uh, you know, you flip it to input mode, and then it would flip you out of keyboard mode and into the mode, or maybe it stays in keyboard mode, I don't know. Like if it's not plugged in, and it's not uh, Bluetooth connected, yeah, that makes more sense, let's do that. So if it's powered, it is in normal mode, basically. It is in keyboard mode. It is in input mode. Input mode? Yeah, input mode. And then you would type and control directly the device. So that's rather easy to do programmatically. Like you can build stuff, and C C and Arduino don't have a problem with this. This is as long as you make your code rather, you know, somewhat functional. Uh, it's easy to direct input wherever input needs to go and translate input wherever it needs to be translated. But what's it? oh again, yeah. so I would get an idea and be like, oh, remind myself to X Y Z, and then you pick up the keyboard, and then you know, rem, something short for remind, or to do, t, uh, rem, x, y, z, at, uh, plus 30, you know, so in 30 minutes, remind me to x, y, z, and then the keyboard will keep track of that, keep track of the time, and then buzz, or beep, or blink, uh, and annoy you, <laughs> so that you can flip back into keyboard mode and be like, yes, I accept this, or no, snooze it, or this is complete, you know, shut it down, shut it down. Uh, and that way you can kind of, you can input immediately, you can be reminded of things in a device that you're carrying around pretty persistently or constantly. Uh, the keyboard is large, so you have full input, uh, you know, the other problem with doing this on a small device was like, okay, how do I transfer new data into this? And it was like, you, you input via serial, or you input via, um, huh, that's interesting, uh, you input via, like, a, a wireless Bluetooth connection, a, a Bluetooth serial connection, which is possible, I got the app for it on this, uh, I haven't messed around with it yet, though. But that, that seemed possible, but it still relies on the phone, and I didn't really like that. Uh, the brainstorm I just had was the idea of having uh, uh, female header pin connections on that PCB. And this will be backwards compatible. The, as long as the device, as long as the physical unit fits in the footprint of the space that's provided on that keyboard, I will make it fit. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably free wire it first. And then after that, I'll make an adapter board so you can take your existing Signum and uh, remove the MCU and then put this adapter board on and then put the new High Let Go craziness on. Uh, <clears throat> I was pretty comfortable with Arduino as far as like syncing 
data on it if I wanted to update something real quick I could get into the source code you know change things real quick and then publish it uh, or you know burn it to the Arduino because that's pretty standardized across uh, across um, operating systems so like that wouldn't be a huge deal but to have a full keyboard to be able to type directly into the device uh, that would be awesome the other thing I was thinking of was if I had female header pins on this thing on the keyboard you can swap the brains you know <clears throat> the idea would be that the the keyboard is an output device you plug the teensy into it and you plug it into your computer uh, or you plug the the Adafruit feather into it and make it a Bluetooth device <clears throat> and you type into as an output into whatever Bluetooth device uh, but then when you have the reminder tool when that starts buzzing or you want to remind yourself of something you pull out the teensy you plug in that thing and you type directly into it that would be pretty cool and hot swappable uh, you have to make protectors for the header pins that would kind of stink but this this covers everything quite well and in a low profile package and it reduces the amount of stuff you have to carry so uh, all of that is just programming logic that would have to be you know flipping states in order to determine where your output is going or whether it's going to Bluetooth device 1 Bluetooth device 2 or out the the cable that you're using to connect directly to the computer uh, which should also charge the device so I, I want to test how fast that charges or if it even matters um, because now that I'm not using a Raspberry Pi like it doesn't it, it, it hardly matters um, if you're not using a Raspberry Pi your power requirements go way down so that's pretty cool so this will be an interesting project and uh, Oh, and like the, the LoRa and the Wi-Fi and the, the Bluetooth. The Wi-Fi would be interesting. Uh, you'd be able to set... <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't think about that. You'd be able to set up a, 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 a small web server on, the, on the, the chipped device. And my keyboard has a web server. <laughs> And the funny thing that was when I was thinking about this, like the keyboard is an input device for the chip. It's for the uh, for the for the reminder device because it has more features than the keyboard does. The keyboard, and I've said this before, and it tickled me when I said it the first time. The keyboard is an accessory. <laughs> we need to build a keyboard around this device. Um. Now, all the more realized if it were hot swappable using female header pins. This is this is the keyboard input device, uh, but to be able to have that device and you know have it in your hand and be like, I'm gonna set my reminders or check this, and it buzzes, it beeps, it flashes, it does whatever it does, and then be like, oh, and plug, and now it's a keyboard, and now I'm typing into whatever or you know change your settings to switch to Bluetooth device whatever you get a text message and you flip a switch and then your output gets sent to uh, your cell phone you type directly into your cell phone and then flip the switch back and now you're typing through the wire to your computer it's pretty cool and it integrates more things into I was looking at these chips and I'm like, oh, this has an OLED integrated into it. Like, that simplifies things. I'm like, oh, this one has some Bluetooth and also the OLED. Well, that simplifies. Well, this one has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and the OLED. I'm like, well, this one has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and the OLED and it has LoRa. <laughs> to be able to switch it to, like, chat mode and have it search for LoRa devices that are on the same protocol, which I have to, like, write a protocol or something for it. Um, and I'm like, I'm already, like, well, what are the security aspects here? I'm like, bro, there's got to be like two people in the entire city that have this. You're just going to want to make it like chirp and broadcast as soon as someone is within range. So you could be like, hey, isn't this cool? And you could be like, yeah, sure. <laughs> What's your name? And then gone. <laughs> Too far. <laughs> uh, this, this idea of, I'm not sure if I've shared this before. I want to build more personal communication more more local communication 
uh, between people and I'm interested in how technology can uh, facilitate that and make the transaction make the human interaction more efficient uh, I was talking to my neighbor across the street and he brought up a few points and I was like oh well I'm kind of on the same bent as you like I agree there and he's like oh well what about this and I was like yep I'm 100% with you and he's like oh great cool like that's something that you have to show up and be like hey hello my name is Troy how are you uh, how's the weather today how are things going uh, do you like sand <laughs> I think it's coarse and rough and it gets into everything like you have to have those conversations and like I understand uh, it just seems inefficient so part of the idea that I had was this <clears throat> I want people to communicate and connect wirelessly and be able to understand things about the people around them. Uh, so the original idea was like, if you like, uh, you know, music, music is cool. I like music. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to show up and be like, hey, do you like music? And like, yes, I do like music. The idea would be that you have a, a wall, basically, for lack of a better term, to, to adopt or steal a Facebook term. You have a wall upon which you post your likes and your, you know, your stuff. I would, I would call it tags. You would have to be tagging things. And then when you get within range of someone else, you can have an exchange happen where your device checks with their device and their device says, oh, this person has a 20% match for the tags that you have. And you can just dump, you know, whatever you want in there. <clears throat> and then you'll get a notice, like, this person has 20% tag match with you for X, for these tags. And you're like, oh, someone is nearby is interested in the same things I'm interested in. Well, that's cool. And you, you can chat to them directly. And then whether they're within, you know, a mile or half a mile or 20 feet, you can then make a personal connection with a face in meat space. <laughs> and turn into a friendship, like create a relationship. Uh, my first problem with this was, or first uh, way to break the system was, okay, so weird guy goes to Starbucks and sees a uh, attractive girl and then sweeps her tags and then comes back the next day with a 100% match on tags. What? How did that happen? We're soulmates now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I thought about that and I'm like, well, what if you applied a one-way hash function to it? Like, then you could do tags that were unreadable, basically, unless you knew the tag. So if I were to be like, uh, you know, conifer trees, like, I love conifer trees, man. I love talking about conifer trees. I don't post conifer trees in my tags. I make a one-way hash function that generates, uh, you know, an SHA-256 hash or something for conifer trees. And the only thing that people see, the only thing that is published, is that hash. And then, <clears throat> if someone else actually likes conifer trees enough to put it in their tags, they'll type in conifer trees, and what is shared is that uh, hash of conifer trees. And then you would get a hash match. And then when you get the reverse, you know, you can't reverse a hash, technically. Uh, you would get that match, and then you would be like, oh, this guy also likes conifer trees. Wow, let's let's meet up and talk about conifer trees, yo. Uh, so that way things are a little bit more private, but also you're still sharing, and you can keep things kind of on the DL. Um, so that would be kind of neat. So you can walk through an area and immediately tell if there's someone nearby that you might want to talk to, which is pretty cool. I think that makes things more efficient. Now, obviously, you can do, like, rainbow tables, technically, <laughs> of interests and uh, uh, reverse engineer some of those things. But the more esoteric you make the, uh, the tag, like, the more unlikely that is to happen. So, you know, if, uh, if I like a particular YouTuber, he can be like, oh, by the way, my, my tag is... XYZ you, YouTuber123, you know, 420 Blaze It, I don't know. And then conifer trees. Just make a really long uh, string. Because the longer the string, the harder you're going to, you know, you're, the harder it's going to be to rainbow table it. Uh, so that, that would be interesting. And that's something that you can do 
via LoRa. That's something you can do via Wi-Fi. Technically, it's, you could do. But I mean, it's it's all it's all wireless communication. I'm I'm learning more about it, so like there's opportunity there. So yeah. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section and stuff like that. Uh, email usually works best though. <laughs> oh, I can't zoom in around.